Hello everyone, and welcome to Drake Makes. Unreal Engine 5.1 has been out for a bit, which means we can use Lumen real-time lighting in VR, and the thing won't run at 12 frames per second. So today, let's set up a new virtual reality scene. If you want to make your own games in Unreal Engine 5, this video has been sponsored by Wingfox. Their latest course teaches you how to build a first-person zombie shooter of your own. With this course, you'll learn everything from coding with blueprints, custom first-person animations, enemy AI, and more. Use my affiliate link in the description and code BFCN to get an additional 30% off. This is a great way to get started learning Unreal Engine and support the channel. And so without further ado, on to the mountains. Starting with the VR template, Nanite and Lumen are still not enabled by default. It's still the old-fashioned baked method that's a pain to work with. To get your project set up, first you want to disable static lighting, and also disable forward shading, and finally, you can turn down your reflection capture resolution for performance reasons. Then go ahead and restart your engine to enable these settings. And with these settings set up within the scene using the light mixer, I access our directional light and change it to movable. Engine scalability settings should be set to all medium, except for global illumination, which is set to high. This enables that beautiful lumen real-time lighting. After that, I downloaded a nanite model of a bunch of rocks from the Megascans library, and... So now your scene is set up to do level art like you usually would. In the process of making the level, I found that you have to be very sparing with your use of Megascans assets in VR or this unsightly flickering will occur. So I stuck with some low poly models for the scene to build this week. This month's free assets include this modular Nordic Ruins kit, which worked great for the idea I had in mind. So I added this kit to the project, cleared out the template level, and got to work building this snowy clearing. I'll link this pack in the description, it's definitely one I'll be coming back to. It comes with three gigantic mountain assets, which are fantastic for filling out backdrops. By themselves in the scene, the mountains look pretty good from a distance, but without any atmosphere, they feel pretty unnatural. Fortunately, exponential height fog is functional with virtual reality, so by adding one of these volumes to our scene and adjusting the color, you can see the difference this makes in making these mountains feel real. Yeah, I was pretty happy about this. This looks great in VR, which got me completely motivated to grind out the rest of the scene. I start off the work by beveling the edges of this cylinder. This is going to act as a center platform that the scene builds out from. The materials for the models of the Nordic Ruins pack are set up so that the snow is always facing upwards on the models, despite rotation. So everything blends together really nicely without much effort. This also allows you to get a lot of mileage out of individual assets, because by rotating them they can look completely different. A lot of time spent in this build was in positioning snowdrifts. They come in seven different models, so they fit in different situations convincingly. I try to have more built-up areas of snow at the edges of other assets so everything blends together nicely. Snow's really great for hiding these hard edges. Now for adding trees. I was messing around with enabling Nanite on different assets in the scene, and thanks to Unreal Engine 5.1, transparency works on assets so the foliage doesn't glitch out in the shadows. These are low-poly assets, so the use of Nanite wasn't completely necessary, but this is a great option for the future when needing high-quality plant assets.
moving forward in the process now, there's a couple more trees placed, and using scaled up versions of the snow drifts, I start closing around the edges of the map. I just want to make sure the player can't see over the edge. This way the whole place is more immersive. I'm just copying around large sections of the backdrop now to make sure that there's no gaps. And then it's back to cliff shaping. To sell that the level actually does stretch into the distance, I place these trees at lower and lower elevations as they move away. This just connects the scene with the rest of the environment more and helps the feeling when looking at everything through the headset. It feels like you're on one of the mountains you can see in the horizon. Getting around to finishing touches now, I scatter a couple more blocks and some plants, all from the same asset pack, and then clean up a few more areas where the edge seemed obvious. Using these little robed monk statues, I made this altar area as a sort of focal point for the scene. And that's pretty much it. Not pictured here because I didn't do it on camera. Right before I was going to showcase the thing, I busted the mega scans and then continued to break the project more while trying to fix that. But after a bunch of optimization, being careful with how I was using Nanite and scaling down the textures, we have our level. Check it out. There we have it, a frozen tundra VR scene. I've said it before and I'll say it again, making levels for virtual reality is so creatively rewarding. It's some of my favorite stuff to work on for sure. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and a comment, it really helps the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one.